Hey everyone, it's time for another CyberDrain Tech in 5 Minutes video. This time we're covering how to create MSIX packages. MSIX packages are Microsoft's answer to manual installations and lots of clicking and that kind of stuff. So let's jump into it because it's going to be really tough to get this in 5 minutes. So one of the things you'll need to start creating MSIX packages is the MSIX packaging tool environment. Using Hyper-V Quick Create, which is automatically installed when you install Hyper-V on your machine, you can download that entire environment. So let's jump into my virtual machine that I've created. One of the first things you'll see installed is the MSIX packaging tool. And when you want to create a new package, this is one of the first screens you'll see. What the MSIX packaging tool does, it creates a snapshot of one moment of your computer, compares it to a snapshot of a later moment, and all the actions that have happened in between are processed and put into a single package. That single package is the MSIX file, which will create a tiny little virtual bubble of the application that you're trying to install. That also means that when you install an MSIX package, it doesn't classically install and leave all sorts of tattooing in the registry, it just creates a virtual bubble for that application and runs it from there. This is a great benefit when you're installing stuff like uh, Java 6 and uh, Google Chrome together. You can also say like, hey, I'm installing a very old version of Java or even maybe Flash Player or anything like that, uh, that that's in that unsupported range. And you can have it safely in its own virtual bubble while the rest of the OS isn't able to touch it at all. So let's get started. One of the things that, that when you create a new package happens is that it starts checking specific things on your machine. Like, hey, we're disabling Windows Update, the, image, uh, uh, the driver has to be installed, and you cannot have any pending reboots. That's because it creates that snapshot. Uh, it also recommends you to disable Windows Search, and that's, of course, because you don't want your image to get bloated simply with yeah, stuff that's happening. So in our case, we're going to try to install Chrome Setup. Here you can specify the installer, but you don't have to. If you don't have an installer and you just want to change some specific settings on the OS, you can do it in the same manner. You always have to sign each package and uh, you can do that with a simple $25 uh, certificate that you can find anywhere. In my case, I'm using a certificate that I've purchased. So we're clicking on next and then you'll have to enter package information. If you've installed uh, or if you selected an MSI package, it'll automatically populate this for you. Another cool thing that you can do is you can manage your own versions here. You can keep them the same as the actual application you're installing. But you can also say like, hey, this is version one of our internal package. And the great thing about packaging applications like this, and I'll show that in a minute when the Google Chrome installer is running, um, is that you can easily change all the settings of the application and it will be transferred into that specific package. You can also say like, hey, my installer is located here, so I won't bring it into the image, but that's not something that's required. You can also click on, hey, add support for the MSIX core uh, to this package, and that means you'll be able to support older OSs. So let's click next in our case, and it will automatically start the installer for us. While the installer is running, I'll try to explain specifically what you can do with this. All of the applications that require like you to constantly sit there and click next and don't allow any automation or anything like that um, can be packaged with this uh, tool. And that means, for example, you have a QuickBooks installer which requires you to fill in a lot of information, licenses, that kind of stuff. You can easily create a package out of that for everyone. The cool benefit about this, like I said, is that it's its own virtual bubble. So having two versions of the same application side by side becomes possible even if the application doesn't support it. While Google Chrome is installing, we're slowly starting to create our own package and uh, the snapshot is comparing all the information. So you do have to notice that your Windows 10 test machine, this specific packaging uh, machine, might not be as fast as the actual end result. That's simply because of all the comparing that's happening in the background. So now that we installed Google Chrome, we can actually start changing some settings in here if we'd like. In our case, it's just Google Chrome. We're not going to change anything. But if we wanted to, we could start the installer for our next application and bundle them together into one virtual bubble. So we'll close this and we'll click next. And at this moment, it'll say like, hey, do you want to launch a new package? And it will launch the package to gather some information about it and see, hey, how does it run? So right now we can just double click on Chrome.exe and it will first launch. 
In our case, we don't want this little pop-up to appear, so we'll close that and we'll close this. And it'll save that inside of the package that we executed those tasks. So now we click Next and it will stop recording all of our actions. So we're clicking Yes to move on. And now it'll ask us like, hey, do you want specific services to be included in your package? And what's very important is that you cannot include services in your package that already exist on the, on the host OS itself, because that just wouldn't work. It wouldn't be able to communicate with those services. So um, always try to prevent specific services, for example, such as uh, auto update services, especially if you're installing an older version of Java. You don't want that package to be constantly be popping up saying like, hey, there's a, there, there's a new uh, update available. So in our case, we're disabling all the update services and excluding them. And we can simply say create, but we can also click on the package editor before we start uh, creating the package. And that gives us uh, stuff like capabilities. We can say, hey, we don't want internet to be available on this entire machine. We don't want it to be able to connect to the internet or we don't want it to be able to use the camera or all that kind of stuff. We can also change virtual registry settings or we can change package files. So add a file to that specific package. In our case, we don't want to do any of that. We'll just click create. And now we'll just overwrite this specific package called Chrome blah, 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 blah. Yes, we'll want to replace it. It will now use that compare, merge them together and create that package. And as I said before, um, it creates its own virtual bubble. So that means it doesn't install the application to see program files anymore, or at least it doesn't install the applications that you're used to. It will actually install it as a Windows app. So the moment you remove it, you can actually go to the control panel, say, remove this Windows app or reinstall this window app, Windows app, and it will reinstall the entire package from scratch in case something ever breaks. It's also a real great benefit that because it doesn't tattoo the registry as, as normal applications do, you can easily remove a package that normally integrates deeply into the OS and breaks things that you otherwise wouldn't notice. So after the application saved these changes, you can uh, use this package on any Windows 10 ver or any Windows 10 machine to deploy Google Chrome. That also means on installations where Google Chrome already exists. We've packaged this specific version, so that means it'll use this specific version to install itself. So for example, you have an application that needs um, Google Chrome 49, so a really old package. You can have those side by side installed. I'll show you as soon as the package is finished saving how that works exactly. So of course, during this entire uh, uh, operation, you need to make sure that you don't make too many changes to the OS when you're in that snapshot phase. Don't add installers, don't copy files that you don't need in your package, otherwise your package will just blow up and become huge. Now in our case, we can now double click the package and it'll say like, hey, what are the capabilities? Well, it has access to all system resources and that means we didn't disable stuff like internet and that kind of stuff. So now we are able to install the package and while it's installing, you'll actually see that nothing happens to the original Chrome installation that we've just performed. We can go over here and we can say, okay, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll visit a website or we'll Google CyberDrain, just something like that. And you'll get all of the regular Google Chrome pop-ups, all of that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's a, just a Google Chrome installation. If we currently look at the path of the Google Chrome app, we'll see that this path that this Google Chrome version, if it loads at the command line, where is that thing? Somehow you always click right past it, right? There. You'll see that this Google Chrome is currently running out of C program files Google Chrome. Exactly. Now we'll, we'll check this specific version of Google Chrome, which just launched after our installer finished. And you'll see that we'll have a new Google Chrome there that is an actual Windows app. Let's close this one so it's, it'll be a bit easier to find everything. And you'll see we'll now have two, we now have two versions of Google Chrome. As you can see, when we click right-click one of these icons, you can go to the app settings, 
and it actually shows you that it is a Windows app. It's created by, by ourselves. We, we did this, we can terminate the app, repair, reset, and install it. We're currently going to the normal Google Chrome. You'll see that it opens the file locations. So this is our normal program files Google Chrome. And that's it. Now we have two Google Chromes installed side by side. While normally speaking, that wouldn't be possible. And you're, you'll be able to do that with pretty much any application. Now I know I'm running a little bit over time, but MSIX is a fantastic way to package applications for your clients. So let's recap. What the MSIX packaging tool does, it creates a snapshot. It uses that snapshot to create a package for you of all of the actions you've performed. You'll be able to deploy that anywhere you want, anytime you want on any Windows 10 OS, or even earlier if you are supporting MSIX Core. The great benefit about this is that it's a virtual bubble, so it doesn't pollute the entire OS. Funnily enough, Office actually works in the same way these days. It no longer installs completely, but has click-to-run technology, which is application virtualization. The biggest benefit about this is that you can automate those installers that are that always claim to be unautomatable. So for example, a QuickBooks or an application that needs a very old version of Java installed. All of that supported into a tiny little virtual bubble so the attack surface becomes a lot more smaller. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, etc. And I'll be seeing you next time.